Chapter 1. Artificial Intelligence or Human Intelligence Tech companies are losing their trust in humans. The world has changed from the days of human intelligence to artificial intelligence, AI. Online services that are now integral to everyday life are riddled with many demands from sites and applications that won't operate unless you accept their terms and conditions. For example, basic registration requires information like date of birth, full name, location, password, and valid address, etc. The world is approaching an era where human resources are not needed because, according to the CEOs of top tech companies, the future is AI. Artificial intelligence that pilots a computer is very efficient, faster, and easier to use than human resources. This is why tech giants like Tim Cook and Mark Zuckerberg have said that they prefer these machines to humans. Nothing lasts forever. Hence, be willing to change as the world changes. Since the emergence of online transactions and the need to protect information that travels online, security has been the number one focus of the online business. Security requires many things, and unfortunately for humans, tech companies trust machines more than humans in handling this. In this summary, you will learn how the age of Google is gradually fading away and what to expect as the post-Google age dawns. You will also get to know why cryptocosm will be crucial in the age to come. The economy has arrived at a point where it produces enough in principle for everyone. So this new period we are entering is not so much about production anymore. How much is produced? It is about distribution. How people get a share in what is produced. W. Brian Arthur Chapter 2. Google is fast becoming the alpha of the internet world, and other companies are merely playing catch-up. Google is one of the top five fastest-growing companies that form the oligopoly of information around the internet. But unlike in the days of Isaac Newton, when money still had good value for its services, Google is finding it hard to create the required trilogy of one universe, one money, and one God. With Newton's idea that money should be made of gold coins, people became confident that their services truly had value, and the fear of a fake or counterfeit was almost non-existent. The system of the world now places power with the state and away from the people. Money has no systemic value because of its diversity, change, and economic inflation that only reflects on the currency itself and not its value for a business. However, it is important to note that of all the big companies that dominate the information world, Google is the biggest in terms of the collection and collaboration of data from different sources. As a result, Google owns the big data of knowledge encompassing science and commerce, religion and philosophy, economics, and epistemology. Google makes money by giving things out for free through the use of ads. From the onset, Google was built to be more than software. That's why it enjoyed the combined efforts of some of the most brilliant techies and developers like John Doerr and John McCarthy. As a result, Google has successfully digitized a sizable part of human life through its expanding database by controlling search with Google Search, images and photos with Google Photos, and music and video with YouTube. However, one fantastic thing about Google is that its services are free of charge for people to use. Yet, they are valued at almost $800 billion, only $100 billion behind the leading company, Apple. Google's ability to attract the entire populace to its search engine, where it seems everything is provided for free, leaves us with many ads to deal with. So, instead of paying directly for what we do on Google, we have to watch many advertisements. Chapter 3. Cryptocosm is the next level of modern security, and its growth is a significant threat to Google. Cryptocosm refers to the systemic network of organizations powered by blockchain technologies in which security and decentralization are essential features. Cryptocosm uses blockchain technology that doesn't have a central server or belong to a particular person. Online transactions are not processed unless verified by both parties whereby funds are refunded should agreement not be met. There are 10 laws regarding the importance of cryptocosm. Security is a priority. Centralization is not safe. Safety lasts only when our goals are achieved. Don't be deceived. Nothing is free. Time is the final measure of cost. When money is stable, humans have dignity and control. Asymmetry law. Use private key rules to secure yourself. 
Your private keys are in your hands, not the government or Google. Behind every private key and its public key is the human interpreter. Human dignity will soon be a priority in cyberspace, and human beings will be in charge of cryptocosm. Today, Google is hierarchical and top-down, but life after Google will be hierarchical and bottom-up. Although Google controls and freely makes use of our information, very soon you will be responsible for your own information and charge for it freely. Most of us are tired of the ubiquitous advertising we see whenever we open Google. Shortly, we will have access to advertisements on our own terms and even get paid for our time and attention. Did you know, in a research conducted by New York Digital Investment Group, about 46 million Americans now own at least a share of Bitcoin. Chapter 4. Google's Data Center Coup and the Popularity of Artificial Intelligence in Our World Today To effectively manage and speed up the process of creating an enabling space that would redefine the online world, Google built its data center in the Dallas, Oregon in 2005. This data center, as of 2001, was capable of sending data worth 640 gigabytes per second. It's almost a decade later, and Google can now handle 8.4 terabytes of data per second while also handling an average of 3.5 billion searches per day and 1.5 trillion searches every year. This expansion led Google to believe that they could dabble into various projects, and this idea birthed innovations like Google Docs, Google Translate, Gmail, Maps, etc. While this expansion has been seen by many as the future of the Internet, Jaron Lanier, a man considered by many people to be the inventor of virtual reality, VR, has labeled these centers as siren servers. This is a reference to Greek mythology about sailors being drawn to their death on the rocks by the alluring sound of the siren bird women. He believes Google's expansion would be their ultimate downfall. AI dominance over humans is nothing but a ruse that can never come to fruition because it lacks emotional intelligence. The fear of artificial intelligence dominance is palpable among humans. There's a growing fear that AI will replace humans in the near future. What's worse is that pioneers of big tech companies in Silicon Valley share this belief too. In 2017, a gathering of tech pioneers took place in California, where they came together to discuss the risks posed by the growth of artificial intelligence. The general belief of these pioneers is that it's inevitable for AI to dominate the future and that people should find a way to live with it. However, since the creation of AI machines, humans have feared that AI could one day displace them due to their high intelligence and effective accuracy. AI is programmed to pose a threat to human dominance. Systems are a combination of programmed codes developed by humans. A computer cannot simply generate things itself. It has to be programmed to do so. AI will be dangerous if only they can, through the data they have become autonomous from, control humans. As Kurt Gödel demonstrated, however, there can be no absolutely complete logical system. Chapter 5 The emergence of Bitcoin and Ethereum is vital to the systemic change needed to challenge the excesses of Google. The Thiel Foundation is a fund organization set up to grant money to young people who drop out of school. It was founded by Peter Thiel in 2005. In 2014, Thiel Fellowship was granted Vitalik Buterin, a college dropout, funds to help set up Ethereum, a blockchain platform that could potentially bring back the Newtonian concept of monetary value. In 2009, an anonymous person or persons named Satoshi Nakamoto announced the first release of Bitcoin, a new electronic cash system that uses a peer-to-peer network to prevent double spending. It's completely decentralized with no server or central authority. The peer-to-peer network allows each user to have specific keys tied to their account. These keys mean that messages are encrypted and can only be decrypted by two users who are having a transaction. With Bitcoin, this blockchain technology doesn't reveal personal information about one user to another user. Transactions are only verified when both parties have acknowledged receipt. It's not just enough to stop a problem. It's best to find ways and means to prevent it from happening again. At regular intervals, a block is created. This block logs all the information about the most recent activities of bitcoins. The timestamp of a block is created through mining. 
A new block comes up when a problem has been completely solved using the processing power of many high-end computers running through a network. When mining is complete, new bitcoins are then generated for the process to go through again. Bitcoins move very fast across platforms. Every transaction is registered in a block, and each block is connected to a blockchain. Blockchains are public, which makes it very easy to trace a Bitcoin's trajectory to when it was initially created. Besides its security and ease of access, Bitcoin has also provided many jobs, apps, and firms. For instance, mining equipment companies, businesses based on the extraction of ores, fossil fuels, minerals, and similar commodities, generated $500 million in revenues alone. Bitcoin and Ethereum are shaping to be the future of the online world of transactions. Chapter 6. Blockchain technology is the closest to creating a new system of the Newtonian concept of monetary value. When Australian computer scientist Craig Stephen Wright came out in 2016 with the claim that he was the anonymous Satoshi Nakamoto, one of the first persons to call him out for a false claim was Vitalik Buterin. Vitalik Buterin is the founder of Ethereum, a blockchain app designed to securely handle smart contracts and cryptocurrencies. Ethereum launched in 2015, intending to provide secure platforms for people to exchange contracts and transactions. Currencies, assets, and shares are sent through the blockchain. And until both parties agree that they've been satisfied, the transaction is not processed, and both parties are refunded with their part of the transaction. Ethereum, like Bitcoin, has its own coin on the platform that has been valued at almost $60 billion. The emergence of Cryptocosm has also seen another company, Blockstack, rise up. Blockstack, headed by Munib Ali, a computer scientist, is also another platform that thrives using blockchain technology. Unlike Bitcoin and Ethereum, Blockstack comprises a browsable network and an open-source environment that's accessible to developers and users. Cryptocosm reduces the chance of fraud because users can't change their passwords without the consent of a third party. While companies are getting funded to build the next generation of fast processors and chips that consume low power, Google is still stuck in an expansion that could consume more power. The future of technology has moved on from bulky and heavy machinery to lightweight, fast types of machinery that are more effective and cost less. NVIDIA, one of the huge companies based in Silicon Valley, is moving away from the orthodox hot chips to faster and more efficient ones. Headed by Bill Daly, NVIDIA is one of the numerous companies that are trying to reduce their physical expansion and make their products more efficient and faster. Daly has projected a future where processors used for system graphics can run without a glitch and move swiftly to transfer data. In what can be considered a gradual but speedy and efficient takeover, it looks likely that blockchain has come to stay, and that doesn't spell good news for Google. Conclusion Innovations and ideas come from a careful examination of problems and how best to solve them. Like Daniel Berniger, founder of Voice Communication Exchange Committee, VCXC, discovered, people don't know what they want, but the moment they are given what they need, that need automatically becomes their want. Google's dominance is due to its expansion, and its eventual demise might also result from the expansion. The Internet has mainly dominated the human world since the late 2000s, and there's barely anything that can't be done online right now. The fear of artificial intelligence is a ruse that can't come to fruition unless somehow machines start developing abilities to think on their own. Machines are a product of programs and commands that have been input by humans. Machines may be faster, more efficient, and even more intelligent than humans, but there's no way they can replace humans. The emergence of blockchain technology has given momentum to creating a whole new system that mirrors that of the Newtonian concept of currency in the 18th century. With this emergence, Google's system of operation runs at risk of being outdated and forced out of the market in the near future. Cryptocosm has its flaws because the value of gold is predictable. It's already a token of exchange and the prices fluctuate with inflation that can't be adequately controlled. If its shortcomings and flaws can be addressed adequately over time, then Google will have no choice but to compete in the market again, lest they lose everything they have worked for. 
Try this. There are various platforms online where you can buy Bitcoin. However, before searching for any, talk to someone with a lot of knowledge about how the market works. This is because trading on an online market requires not just theoretical knowledge, but experience.